Hi, everybody. Let's debrief the classwork. Here's a graph of cosecant x, which is defined as 1 divided by sine. And then there's a graph of sine. We'd noticed a bunch of graph features that would be nice to explain. Like we see these vertical asymptotes. Why are they located where they are? Why does it make u-shapes here? Why do the u-shapes alternate up and down? Uh, why doesn't the y value ever cross the x-axis? For that matter, why is there this horizontal band between negative 1 and positive 1 where there are never any y values? So there are all these kinds of questions. It's great to know factual answers to those questions. What I want you to focus on is the thinking process and the investigation, the kind of investigation you would have to do to answer questions like this for yourself for other graphs. OK, so let's start with where vertical asymptotes come from. We talked in the notes about where the vertical asymptote in the 1 over x graph comes from. So for the 1 over x graph, you are dividing 1 by whatever the x value is. So as the x values get smaller and smaller and smaller, that's like us imagining approaching the asymptote that we know is already there. So let's imagine what happens. Uh, 1 divided by 1 is 1. Remember that if you divide by a fraction like 1 half, that's the same thing as inverting it and multiplying. So 1 divided by a half is 2. 1 divided by 1 tenth would be 10. So that gives us a y value that gets large rather quickly. So as x gets smaller and smaller, the y values get larger and larger. What does that mean geometrically? Let's plot them. So here at 1, 1, I've got a point there. Now as x gets closer to the x-axis, the y values are going to go up. So I'm getting closer on the x, uh, more vertical on the y. Here's 1 tenth is close to x. That would have a, val a y value of 10 way up here. And you know what that shape already looks like. But what we're focusing on is what exactly was it about the equation that causes the y values to go up towards infinity as you approach a specific x value? And the answer is, as you're dividing by a number that's closer and closer to 0, the y values go up towards infinity. The actual asymptote itself is located at the x value that would produce an undefined value. So if I plug in uh, 0 for x, I get 1 over 0, which is undefined. Um, and that's why you don't actually see a point located on that vertical asymptote. Um, but the asymptote is more about what's happening as you get closer and closer. Um, and what's happening when you get closer and closer is the y values go up towards infinity. So let's try and connect that idea back to cosecant. Here for cosecant, we can imagine taking x values that start here at pi over 2, maybe, and get closer and closer and closer to 0. So here. Uh, we see what the actual sine values are. So at pi over 2, sine outputs 1. So what that means is that for cosecant, if we evaluate an input of pi over 2, that's like us saying, what's the cosecant of 1 over sine of pi over 2? And that's like 1 over 1. So that produces the 1 right there. You can see that as our angle gets closer to 0, the sine values get smaller and smaller towards 0 which means that we're dividing by a number that's smaller and smaller towards 0. And that was exactly what happened right here. As you divide by a number that approaches 0, the y values go up towards infinity. So here, sine is going towards 0. We're dividing by sine. So that's why the y values are approaching infinity right there. What's unique about this function is that sine approaches 0 over and over and over again. So here's all of the zeros of sine. Every multiple of pi. So it's 0 and pi and 2 pi and 3 pi and so on. And you can see we've lined these up. Every time that the sine function equals 0, that's exactly where the vertical asymptote is. They line up vertically. So here's my written answer. We know that dividing by numbers that approach 0 cause the y values to approach infinity at the angles pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, et cetera, sine x is 0. So that means that as the angle, as the input angle x approaches those specific angles, sine x is getting closer and closer to 0, and so the y values are approaching infinity. Why is the u-shape facing downwards between pi and 2 pi? 
Uh, one easy way to answer this is all of these y values are negative. And you can see why that would have to be true. Um, in the interval between pi and 2 pi, that's talking about all these angles down there, the sine function is negative for all of those angles. So that means that 1 divided by a negative number is negative. So that means cosecant also is negative. And that's why all of the y values have to be negative. So as we're dividing by smaller and smaller numbers that are forcing the y values to infinity, we know that all of those numbers are actually negative, and so it's forcing us to negative infinity on both sides here. So that's what's producing the u shape. And that's also why the u shape is facing downwards here, but upwards there. It's about whether or not the sine function is positive or negative. Here's a graph of cotangent, which is defined as cosine divided by sine. Let's apply the same idea. Why are the asymptotes located where they are? Again, we see the asymptotes located at 0 and pi and 2 pi and so on. And it's for the same reason. It's because we are dividing by the output of sine. The output of sine equals 0 at those same places. So as our angles approach uh, pi and 2 pi, sine is approaching 0, which means we're dividing by a number that's getting close to 0. And when you divide by things that get closer and closer to 0, the output gets larger and larger towards infinity. So it's the exact same set of reasons. What about, uh, what about here where the y value equals 0? The y values here equal 0 whenever the numerator is 0 and the denominator is something else. So for example, if I had 0 divided by 5, that just equals 5. Uh, note that 5 divided by 0 is undefined. So it's a very, very different kind of situation. Did I say equals 5? <clears throat> equals 0. <laughs> All right, so where does cosine equal 0? Because cosine's in the numerator. Uh, cosine equals 0 here and here and here and here. And you see those x values are the exact same x values where cotangent equals zeros. So you can think about the function in the denominator is controlling where the asymptotes are. The function in the numerator is controlling where the zeros are. Why are these kind of s shapes headed downhill? In other words, why do we go from infinity down to 0 down to negative infinity? Well, we could think about uh, when is cotangent positive versus negative. If you imagine the unit circle for angles between 0 and pi over 2, so this set of angles from 0 to pi over 2, cosine is positive and sine is also positive. So that means cosine divided by sine is positive, which is why all these y values are positive. And remember, as the angles approach 0, we're dividing by a number that gets close to 0, which forces y values to infinity. But because it's all positive, it's going to be positive infinity. On this side, the angles between pi over 2 and pi. So now we're talking about this part of the unit circle. Here, cosine is negative and sine is positive. So that means all the cotangent values are going to be negative. And so that's why you see all the negative y values here. And then as x approaches that asymptote, we're dividing by numbers that approach 0. But because the overall sign is negative, we're approaching negative infinity instead of positive infinity. So that would be one way of seeing why that has the shape that it does. Try and apply these same ideas to the homework. The homework asks these questions, but also some other questions that are related. Uh, come back in the next video if you want to see a solution to uh, the first kind of A-level problem on the back page.